The Shoei NXR is one of the best road going helmets that you can buy. Small, lightweight, well ventilated, and at a great price point, its popularity with motorcyclists was massive. And now it's even better with the NXR2. It's the first helmet in the Shoei lineup to meet the latest ECE 2206 helmet safety regulations. Ready for when it comes into effect in 2024. We've got a summary video coming on ECE 2206 soon. So go ahead, give us a subscribe, press that notification bell, and you'll be notified when that one drops. Straight off the bat, when you compare the NXR2 to the previous model, we've got a very familiar silhouette. It just looks a little more sculpted, a little more purposeful, a refination of the OG NXR really. All the classic NXR features are there, an integrated rear spoiler, the classic kicked up lip at the bottom, no sun visor, and the little pinched up sides of the shell. Bone apple teeth. Now the shell is also more aerodynamic than the previous model. We have a 6% reduction in lift, and a 4% reduction in drag. Now, in theory, this better aero should help offset the extra few grams that the NXR2 has gained over the original. Now, the top three vents are a lot bigger, as well as much easier to operate. The central vent has a bigger overhaul, gaining an additional port for intaking air, and it operates on an up and down motion with a nice chunky slider. Uh, it's also much nicer to operate than the original side to side method. The chin vent has changed a lot too. It's now this flattened Y shape much easier to operate and it vents the air directly up to the visor to help with demisting without blasting air into your eyes. On the exhaust side of things, the rear vents now allow 50% more airflow through them, but this doesn't close, they're always open. Now to be fair, the previous model was a little bit tricky to tell when it was open uh, and some riders I've spoken with tend to just to leave it open full time anyway. Also, if you didn't know, Shoei design channels into their EPS liners. That encourages the air to flow over your head, which helps to make those vents a lot more efficient at keeping you cool. Once we've peeled back all the interior, we can get a rather good look at it. We've got the red tabs here for the emergency removal for the cheek pads. Quite easily just pop out, as does the crown piece too. All these bits are fully washable. Now, you'll notice that these rubber parts stay in place on the side of the helmet, and at the back here. Now these are all new additions to the NXR2 that help firm up that neck roll area. It gives a really good seal when the helmet is on, um, so it's gonna make it a lot quieter. It does make it a bit harder to get on, a little bit tighter, especially when it's new, but that will sort of ease up over time. As with all Shoei helmets, you can make use of their custom fitting service. So you can tailor the interior pads exactly to your fit. So you can have thicker or thinner cheek pads, you can change the crown piece. Now this service is available in store and online. Full details in the description below. Now inside we can see the EPS liner and we see those channels I mentioned earlier to flow the air over our head. So front to back, all the way to the back of the helmet and across the side there to spread that over. Now this EPS liner is designed with multiple densities. That means Shoei have basically tailored the shock absorption to make the NXR2 as effective as possible for taking impacts. So that combined with their AIM shell, advanced integrated matrix made from layers of fiberglass and organic fibers, makes a helmet which is incredibly safe and incredibly light makes it the first showy helmet to meet EC2206 too. Now that AIM shell comes in four different shell sizes, which covers 2XS to 2XL. Now that's an additional shell size from the NXR and breaks down into 2XS and XS showing a shell, XL and 2XL showing a shell, whilst medium and large both get a shell size each. Now why is that important? It means a snugger shell size, less sort of over padding inside, and the likelihood of looking like a bubble head is greatly reduced, especially for those people with a smaller noggin. The original NXR was great for the smaller head and the NXR2 continues to serve those with a weak radium. On the sides of the helmet, we have got covers for the speaker cutouts. They simply pop out nice and easily enough. But this, and it's where I think the NXR2 could have been better, in its pursuit to become the ultimate sports helmet where safety, reduced mass, and optimal aerodynamics are top of the brief, the Intercom integration is a bit of a compromise. A clamp simply just won't work, um, so it's adhesive only. And the options for sticking doesn't really give you a lot of choice, so there's maybe sort of a bit here and that's about it. It, it can be done if it, you must have an Intercom, but it's just not, you don't have the flexibility like you do on other helmets. Looking forward then, and there's a new visor system. 
called the CWR F2. It has a redesigned shape and a new central locking system, rather than being offset to the left like the rest of the Shoei range. Now, this is perfect for ambidextrous use. Like if you're sat at the lights with the bike in first, with your hand on the clutch, and rather than giving that sort of awkward reach around, just push the central button and lift. The pin lock also has been reworked for a larger viewing aperture. The pins come right round to the side here and they're completely out of your line of sight. And you get that pin lock included in the box too. The visor seal is also improved as well for better fit to prevent any leaks. And the whole system can be adjusted by moving the base plates backwards and forwards. Changing the visor on the NXR2 is slightly different to the original. Um, it takes a little bit more technique. It was really straightforward on the old one, but let's go through it. So we've got a little tab here. We're going to push that forward and then we're going to sort of push forward and lift out at the same time like that. It takes a little bit of getting used to. It doesn't just pop straight off. You have to sort of go forward and then out. And then it's just the reverse of when you're putting it back in. So line it back up again, go forward and it just clips back in. If you're having issues, try and put a little bit of forward pressure on it and it will pop out or it will slip back in place. And it is quite straightforward. Just a little bit of technique there. You'll see on the side, we've got some vortex generators because well, you wouldn't want to hell with it doesn't generate vortexes, really, of course. Now actually they do do an important job. They help the air to sort of stick to the helmet better. Um, it will flow nicer along the helmet and just reduce turbulence just like an Xperia 3. Now the NXR2's visor is also what is typically known as a flat visor. It means it only curves in one direction sort of from left to right, but not top to bottom. It's better for fitting tear-offs, which is somewhat irrelevant as the visor doesn't come with tear-offs posts as standard, um, but it is also better from a sort of an optical perspective as well, meaning there's less distortion. As I mentioned before, there's no drop-down sun visor, so it's tinted visors only. Now, the biggest benefit of this is it reduces the amount that the front of the helmet sticks out. It means sort of a better line of sight for those full tuck shenanigans. Now we've got a variety of colors on offer from sort of solid gloss and matte colors to a nice range of graphics. We've got this one here. We've got that lovely mural over there and the arcane there. That's got to be a particular highlight of mine. It just, just looks so right. Another benefit of the NXR2 then, well, the original NXR just got a whole lot cheaper. The NXR and the NXR2 then side by side, you can see they're very similar. You can see it's definitely got that lineage, but how showy have moved it on. The latest safety regulation, so 2206, we've got much better ventilation. We've got a much better visor aperture. Will it be the next best road helmet for the next sort of five, six years? Who knows? Time will tell. Available now at Infinity Motorcycles.